Air France Flight 590. On July 25, 2000, Air France Flight 590, a Concorde jet was set to fly from Paris to New York. It was a charter flight carrying 100 passengers, mostly German tourists heading for a cruise, along with nine crew members. As the Concorde was taking off, it ran over a metal strip that had fallen from the Continental Airlines DC-10 that had departed earlier. This debris caused one of the Concorde tires to burst. The exploding tire sent debris flying, which hit the underside of the left wing and punctured a fuel tank. The leaking fuel caught fire, creating flames under the wing. Even though two of its four engines lost power, the Concorde was already moving too fast to stop safely, so it had to take off. But with the fire, damaged engines, and landing gear that wouldn't retract, the plane couldn't climb properly. Just two minutes after taking off, it crashed into a hotel in Gonaise, France. Tragically, all 109 people on board and four people on the ground lost their lives. Investigators found that the crash happened because the metal piece left on the runway punctured the tire. When the tire exploded, pieces of it hit the wing, breaking the fuel tank and causing a fire. The fire led to engine failure, which made it impossible to control the plane. Experts also noted that the Concorde was very heavy at takeoff, which made the situation even worse. American Airlines Flight 587 American Airlines Flight 587 was a regular flight from New York's JFK Airport to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic on November 12, 2001. Most of the passengers were Dominican Americans traveling back home. The plane, an Airbus A300-600R, had 260 people on board, including nine crew members. The flight took off shortly after Japan Airlines' Boeing 747. As it climbed, it encountered turbulence from the larger plane. The first officer, who was flying, reacted by moving the rudder, the part of the tail that helped steer back and forth too aggressively. This put extreme pressure on the plane's vertical stabilizer, causing it to break off. Without the tail, the aircraft became impossible to control. Within seconds, both engines also broke off due to stress, and within minutes, the plane crashed into the Bell Harbor neighborhood in Queens, killing everyone on board and five people on the ground. The National Transportation Safety Board investigated and found that the crash was caused by the first officer's excessive rudder movements, which put too much force on the tail. They also discovered that the rudder system on this type of Airbus was very sensitive, making the problem worse. The report pointed out that American Airlines' pilot training may have encouraged overly aggressive responses to turbulence, which contributed to the accident. Alaska Airlines Flight 261 Alaska Airlines Flight 261 was a regular flight from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico to Seattle, Washington, with a stop in San Francisco. On January 31, 2000, the flight was operated by McDonnell Douglas MD-83, carrying 83 passengers and five crew members, making a total of 88 people on board. The plane had been flying since 1992 and had logged over 26,000 flight hours. While cruising at 31,000 feet, the pilots began experiencing issues with the horizontal stabilizer, a critical part of the tail that controls the plane's up and down movement. They tried to fix the issue, but the stabilizer got stuck, causing the plane to dive suddenly. The pilots managed to pull it back up, but the problem wasn't solved. A few minutes later, a critical part called the jack screw, which controls the stabilizer, completely failed. With no way to control the plane's pitch, it went into a deep dive and crashed into the Pacific Ocean near Anacapa Island, California. Sadly, all 88 people on board lost their lives. The National Transportation Safety Board investigated the crash and found that the jack screw assembly had worn out because it wasn't properly lubricated. This happened because Alaska Airlines had stretched out its maintenance schedule and the FAA had approved those longer gaps between inspections. The NTSB concluded that the crash was caused by a loss of pitch control due to this failure. Experts blamed both Alaska Airlines and the FAA for allowing maintenance schedules that put safety at risk. The investigation also revealed that the MD-80 series aircraft didn't have a backup system to prevent such failures. As a result, the NTSB recommended stricter maintenance rules, better oversight, and design improvements to prevent similar tragedies in the future. Singapore Airlines Flight 006 Singapore Airlines Flight 006 was a scheduled flight from Singapore to Los Angeles with a stop in Taipei, Taiwan. On October 31, 2000, the flight was operated by a Boeing 747-412, carrying 159 passengers and 20 crew members, making a total of 179 people on board. The aircraft had been in service since 1997 and featured a special tropical livery to promote the airline's cabin services. During heavy rain and strong winds from the typhoon Zhang Sein, the plane was cleared for takeoff from runway 05L. However, due to poor visibility and possible confusion with taxiway signs, the pilots mistakenly lined up on runway 05R, which was closed for maintenance and had construction equipment on it. 
Without realizing their mistake, they began their takeoff. A few seconds later, the plane crashed into construction vehicles like excavators and bulldozers breaking apart and catching fire. Tragically, 83 people lost their lives while 96 survived, some with serious injuries. Taiwan's Aviation Safety Council investigated the crash and found several key reasons behind it. The pilots misidentified the runway and didn't double-check their position before takeoff. The typhoon made visibility worse, making it harder to see ground markings. The closed runway didn't have enough lighting and clear signs to show it wasn't in use. Additionally, the airport lacked a ground radar system that could have alerted air traffic controllers to the mistake. Experts concluded that a mix of human error, bad weather, and poor airport infrastructure caused the accident. As a result, safety recommendations were made to improve runway signage, lighting, and radar systems to prevent such tragedies in the future. China Airlines Flight 611 China Airlines Flight 611 was a passenger flight from Taipei, Taiwan to Hong Kong. On May 25, 2002, the flight was operated by a Boeing 747-209B, an aircraft that had been flying since 1979 and had completed around 64,810 flight hours. On board were 206 passengers and 19 crew members, making a total of 225 people. The plane departed from Taipei, bound for Hong Kong, with an expected arrival in just over an hour. However, about 20 minutes into the flight, while cruising at 35,000 feet, it suddenly disappeared from radar. Investigators later discovered that the aircraft had broken apart midair and crashed into the Taiwan Strait, about 23 miles northeast of Penghu Islands. Sadly, no one survived. Taiwan's Aviation Safety Council investigated the crash and found that the plane had suffered damage 22 years earlier. Back in 1980, during a landing in Hong Kong, the aircraft's tail had hit the ground, damaging the rear fuselage. Instead of properly replacing the damaged section as Boeing recommended, a quick fix was applied, a doubler plate was placed over the damaged area. Over time, cracks formed in the structure and on May 25, 2002, those cracks finally gave way, causing the plane to break apart in the air. Experts stressed how important it is to follow proper maintenance and repair guidelines to keep aircraft safe. The investigation report pointed out that the incorrect repair and lack of proper inspections led to the disaster. Helios Airways Flight 522 on August 14, 2005, Helios Airways Flight 522 was flying from Cyprus to Prague with a planned stop in Athens. The Boeing 737 had 121 people on board, including 115 passengers and six crew members. The plane took off and began its climb. But something went wrong. The cabin wasn't pressurizing properly because the systems had been accidentally left in manual mode instead of auto. This caused oxygen levels to drop slowly, leading to hypoxia, a condition where people don't get enough oxygen. The pilots thought the warning alarm meant something else and didn't put on their oxygen masks. Eventually, the crew and passengers lost consciousness, and the plane continued flying on on autopilot. It circled over Athens for some time until it ran out of fuel, crashing into a hillside near Gramatico, Greece. Sadly, everyone on board lost their lives. Investigators later found that a ground engineer had left the pressurization system on manual mode during maintenance, and the pilots didn't notice it during their pre-flight checks. Since the plane's warning sounds were similar for different problems, the pilots misunderstood what was happening. Experts stressed the importance of better warning systems, thorough pre-flight checks, and proper maintenance to prevent such tragedies in the future. TAM Airlines Flight 3054 On July 17, 2007, TAM Airlines Flight 3054 was flying from Porto Alegre to Sao Paulo, Brazil. The Airbus A320 had 187 people on board, including 181 passengers and 6 crew members. The plane landed at Congonhas Airport during rainy conditions. But instead of slowing down, it kept moving too fast and veered to the left. It went past the end of the runway, crossed a busy road and crashed into TAM Express Warehouse and a gas station. The crash caused a massive fire, and tragically, all 187 people on the plane and 12 of the ground lost their lives. This became the deadliest plane crash in Brazil's history. Investigators later found that one of the engine controls was left in the wrong position when the plane landed. The right engine stayed in climb mode, which kept pushing the plane forward while the left engine was set to idle. Because of this, the plane couldn't slow down properly. On top of that, the systems that helped the plane stop after landing didn't activate. The runway also didn't have proper grooves to drain rainwater, making it even harder for the plane to break. Experts concluded that pilot error and poor runway conditions played a big role in the accident. The tragedy showed the need for better landing procedures, proper aircraft maintenance, and airport improvements to prevent similar disasters in the future. Air France Flight 447 
Air France Flight 447 was flying from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to Paris, France on June 1, 2009. The Airbus A330 had 228 people on board including 216 passengers and 12 crew members. While flying over the Atlantic Ocean at 35,000 feet, the plane encountered severe weather. Ice crystals blocked the sensors that measured airspeed, causing the autopilot and automatic throttle to turn off. The pilots had to take control manually, but they made incorrect movements that caused the plane to lose lift and go into a stall. Even though the warning systems alerted them multiple times, they didn't realize the plane was stalling and didn't take the right steps to fix it. The aircraft continued to descend until it crashed into the ocean, tragically killing everyone on board. Investigators from France's Aviation Safety Board found several key issues. The block sensors led to wrong airspeed readings, confusing the pilots. Instead of following proper procedures, the pilots made control inputs that made things worse. They also didn't realize that the plane had stalled and didn't take the actions needed to recover. Experts stressed the need for better pilot training, especially in flying manually at high altitudes and dealing with incorrect airspeed readings. The investigation also pointed out the importance of better communication between aircraft makers, airlines, and pilots to make sure training and procedures are as effective as possible. Comair Flight 5191 On August 27, 2006, Comair Flight 5191, flying as Delta Connection, was set to travel from Lexington, Kentucky to Atlanta, Georgia. The plane was a Bombardier CRJ-100ER with 50 people on board, 47 passengers, and 3 crew members. The pilots were cleared to take off from runway 22, which was suitable for commercial flights. However, they accidentally turned on to runway 26, which was much shorter and mainly used for smaller planes. This runway didn't have lights, but the pilots still started their takeoff. The plane didn't have enough room to gain speed needed for liftoff, so it ran off the end of the runway, crashed into a fence and trees, and caught fire. Sadly, 49 people died, and only the first officer, James Polinke, survived with serious injuries. Investigators from the NTSB found that the pilots didn't properly check their location before takeoff. They also got distracted by unrelated conversations while taxiing, which made them lose awareness of where they were. Another issue was that air traffic control didn't have a rule requiring specific clearance for crossing runways, which could have prevented the mistake. 